Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome back from the opening ceremony as well as the uh, the group uh, picture. The, the the group picture picture picture, picture taken. As uh, Mr. Mr. Bendy said, uh, said rather, we are now going to dive into uh, the presentations. And as he said, what we decided was that we'll just focus on some of the key areas of the report instead of dwelling on issues that are obvious to everybody who is here. Uh, you realize, of course, that you are all invited here because of the expertise in education. So there are a lot of things that are actually agreed on. Very long to you, so we I'm going to skip those. And for the first part, I'm going to be talking about just basically the objectives of the of the um, DCTC, the approach and the methodology that was used in preparing this study, and also the rationale uh, for the for the study. Basically, as we have on the screen there, and let me see if I can maybe try to, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think it's fairly related to the enemies. Uh, but the overall objective of the study basically is to develop a comprehensive plan for the transformation of the Gambia College into a world-class university of education. Now, this is something that was from the get go our guiding principle that we really didn't want any university we wanted a university of education that was going to be world class that was going to hold its own in the face of competition from any university in the world now you might say that's a very tall order and you would say why not because at the end of the day we realized that we live in a very highly globalized world um, in which well, whatever you do, you should keep in mind that you should try to address a global audience and doing the things that we need in the globalized world. It reminds me of a few years ago when GRTS, our national radio station, started going on satellite. And I told a friend of mine, was one of the CDO staff, that now, before you went on satellite, whatever mistake you did, stayed in the Gambia. But now you're on satellite, whatever mistake you do actually is out there for the whole world to see. So that's why we said we want to develop or turn the Gambia College into a world-class university. And in that regard, we had a few specific objectives delineated or specified. One was to develop a roadmap for transforming the Gambia College into a world-class education. That's the roadmap itself. <laughs> Two, as part of the roadmap, is to develop an institutional framework for the program for university education. Where we talked about the various faculty, various departments, the governance of the institution network. And prepare an indicated project for the transition to the new university education. Now, we realized right the fact that, what, uh, that we are not experts in building structures. We are not, none of us were, was an architect or is an architect or engineer. And so we realized that some of these details will have to be left for the implementation of the roadmap itself. But nevertheless, we could use some indicated numbers and present that in our report. The fourth one is that we have a proposed an academic and professional programs to produce quality teachers and other educationists that we are talking about and we desire to see in this world-class university of education. We also, uh, we develop and propose human resource and capacity development plans and then prepare a plan for sustainable financing and resource mobilization for the university and finally propose appropriate change drivers for the transformation process. If you think about these specific objectives, you will also think in the same way of specific sections in the report itself. When you talk about proposing human resource capacity development plans, we talk about human resources issues, especially in the transition plan, what are we going to do with existing human resource base that exists in the Gambia College? When we're talking about change drivers um, in the transformation process, that again, if you look at the section of transitional elements, 
we're talking about all these issues. What are you going to do about the demolition capacity of existing government college staff to make sure they are up to par and up to snuff in terms of requirements of the uh, of the University of Education? The same thing with financial uh, financing and resource mobilization. We um, are thinking and we have to think about how do we mobilize resources. One, to actually build this institution, and two, sustain uh, it uh, on an ongoing basis. So uh, that those are the specific objectives and the specific uh, agenda. So thanks. Okay. Is it on? Yes, yes. Okay. I have to put out a mistake. Yeah. So those are the overall the specific objectives. Now regarding the approach and the methodology of the of the of the uh, of for the preparation of, of the report. Basically, what we you know decided was that we want to use a multifaceted strategy and approach to prepare the support. One is that we have to prepare in terms of reference you know, uh, for our work because it's important that we are all on the same page with the Minister of Higher Education Science and, and more her science and technology. So to do that, we, we spent some time developing the terms of reference for, for the work, and then of course we did this on consultation with the full participation of mortars. Now, once that was done, then we knew we had a sense of direction that was to the satisfaction of mortars, then we got to work, gathered information, and we came back it from the consultation exercise. At the end of the day, we wanted a roadmap that was evidence-based, that were also participatory, in the sense that we had as many people, as many constituencies, as many interest groups, as many stakeholders consorted, not only out of respect for their rights to be involved in something as important as this, but also out of recognition of the expertise that they individually and collectively could bring to bear on a document like this. We in no way, at any point, took it upon ourselves to think that we knew everything about what we were supposed to do. In other words, we approached this with a very humble uh, uh, perspective, knowing and being fully aware of the fact that there is a lot of expertise in the gap that we need to be finished in order to talk this with them. That's what we tried to do. And also, we realized that there's practically nothing you're going to embark on that hasn't been done before. Again, so it's advisable to learn, especially from our African brothers and sisters, especially those of us around me, um, in, in the subcontinent in West Africa. Fortunately for us, Ghana was just next door, and they were more than willing to host us, and it was there that we went uh, to the, uh, uh, and I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself here, but we went to Ghana, University of Education in and also University of King Coast. More about those uh, institutions very briefly, uh, in, in short letter, short letter. So then we 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 we, we got to work, and we got to different uh, phases. You know, the inception phase, basically. I'm thinking here, <laughs> putting on my consultant's cap here, and the activities that were involved that we embarked on in that inception phase, basically, was like I said, the preparation of TOR. And then we also have had to prepare the work plan for the execution of our work. I think this, this thing has a problem here. Let me just use that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So we had a work plan and resources required, and we also did step in the consultations and the review of the documents. And then we had consultations with focus groups. In the Gambi here, we example went to the Gambia College, had discussions with uh, groups of staff as well as, as students. We also went around to various ministers and you'll see a list of the consultations that we had in the Gambia and the various organizations we consulted at the back of the document in the annexes. And then, like I said, we went on a story tour in August, early August in Ghana, University of uh, Education, Winneba, which actually was constituted from various digital training colleges in Ghana into one university of education. That was precisely what we're trying to do here. And also the University of Cape Coast, uh, we also has a very strong um, education faculty 
with interestingly enough, actually the most instrumental to the founding of the University of Education in Geneva, which actually itself was affiliated for the, with the University of Kyoto. So we, in a way, were lucky to have stumbled on that in the sense that those were institutions that had respect in Ghana and the experience in transforming institutions into University of Education. As it happens also, University of Education, some of the constituent colleges in there were critical to providing teacher training for Gambians in the 60s and early 70s. As a matter of fact, I just found that one of my teachers in Amity happened to have been to Winneba for his uh, education. So uh, it, it was just very interesting. And so we had a lot of uh, good uh, information drawing on the experiences that they have in those institutions. Yeah. Okay. Is it working now? Do you want to hear it? Okay, anyways, yeah, okay. Now, uh, the other thing we did also was we conducted an online survey because we realized that not everybody could be reached physically. Uh, so it was good that we, we leveraged the, the internet and, and, and basically talked to um, uh, and developed an online survey. The questions are uh, annexed in, uh, in the report, annex 20.7. Uh, fortunately, we had uh, about 70 uh, respondents there about, with, uh, from mostly Gambians, so pretty much all over the world there was uh, respondents or two from Hong Kong, some from the UK, uh, I think there were some from the US, and of course also from the Gambian too. So it was very interesting because we got some very interesting feedback from some of the participants in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, what's called in the, in the, in the online survey. And we, as you go through the report, you will see that we have actually, we actually incorporated some of those reports in the, um, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the report findings itself. Basically, the national, uh, as has been mentioned um, in uh, in the various presentations at the opening ceremony. We are at the point in our national development where we have to take a very hard look at our education system and what can be done to improve it. And the key here, the key strategy would be to ensure that we have the challenges we need and also in the numbers that we need them to address the demographic challenges that we face. Now, if you look at the vast results that have been coming up for the past three or something like the three or so years, they've been this one, let's, you know, always play this way. Where, for instance, in the Gambia, our national partner, using a criterion of five subjects, I mean, the credit in five subjects, uh, A1 to C6, uh, in five subjects, including English language and maths, we've been barely doing 5%. When, you know, in Ghana, they've been having class rates of like 70 in Nigeria, even Sierra Leone, 7 to 80%. So clearly, something has to be done. This is not like a flu. You didn't say that it was the COVID, the pass rates were low. This has been happening over a number of years. So there is clearly a systemic issue here that needs to be addressed. And one of the issues, and of course, teacher training is not the magic bullet that's going to solve every problem, but it's going to be a key and critical issue that needs to be addressed so we can move forward to addressing the challenges that we have in our uh, school system. And if we don't address the challenges we have in our school system, we are not going to move forward as a nation. As I always tell people, as far as I'm concerned, I believe I'm of, of the conviction that we are sitting in this country on a tiny bomb. If we don't train our youths, we are going to have people who are going to have expectations that the strategy cannot provide them. And what that's going to lead to is anybody's guess. Uh, so I will stop here and then pass the mic on to my friend, uh, Dr. Baru Sewar, and he will take care of the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, once again, excuse me for my voice. Um, it's power or whatever. Now, we are going to look at um, the section on the mission, vision statements and the core values we are proposing for the new university. 
the name we are proposing is the university. These are all proposals subject to your um, discussion, approval, suggestion, etc. The University of Education, Gambia University of Education, GUE. Um, and as per the Act, the Higher Education and um, the tertiary, tertiary Education, Higher that's an higher education at 2016. The emblem of the university will be determined by the governing council that will be appointed. Now, the mission for the new university we are proposing is a university that will be to be a for to be a world class university of excellence with a national character. Just excuse me to pause here one minute about this national character issue. We want, I let me quote from you, um, from a statement we had from, I came upon us, from our brother, Professor Ablai Sen, when he was reviewing, do I have it here? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Anyway, when he was reviewing um, the book Disparities in the Academy, Account Accounting for the Elephant, written by one our sister Veronica PSDISR et al. He said, and I quote, for a start, universities reflect or are microcosms of the societies in which they are located. They embody and mirror the values, aspirations, as well as the contradictions and dysfunctions of society. So what we are trying to propose here, in as much as we are talking of world standards, at the same time, we wanted to have a Gambian character embodying the values and traditions, etc. of the Gambia like all uh, major institutions at least. We, we want this university to generate knowledge through research and innovation, feeds that knowledge into the teaching and learning of teachers and educators, and has an efficient and sustainable management of its program and resources. This is the vision we are proposing. In terms of the mission, we want a university to produce qualified teachers and educationists using modern and innovative technologies and media to be highly competent in the subject matter of their specialization. Equip them with the requisite pedagogic and methodological skills to provide relevant quality teaching and learning to learners and enable them to contribute to the efficient management of schools and education systems. The core values of the university we are proposing compose will contain scholarship, scholarship in terms of knowledge generation. The University of the, the Gambia University of Education, GUE, will promote scholarship by developing learning characteristics of staff and students to advance knowledge acquisition and application in the various subject, subject fields of study. We want the university to embody excellence. The UE will encourage and promote excellence by creating standards in teaching, research, and professional practice of its staff and products. We want the university to promote professionalism. GUE will inculcate in its staff and students professional values or personality traits that will make them world-class educators and educationists. In particular, GUE will encourage staff and students to constantly show a dedication to personal growth and the mission of GUE. Respect for others, strong work ethic, and a strong sense of responsibility and integrity among the qualities, I mean, among other qualities. 
We want to imbibe and to grow and entrepreneur other spirits in new, new DOE. DOE will develop an entrepreneurial spirit in its staff and students by cultivating a culture of adaptability, innovative thinking, tolerating risk, persistent curiosity, decisiveness, <coughs> and focusing on the long term. That is, we envisage that output graduates of DOE should be self-sustaining. They should not rely on uh, only on institutional employer and they should be able to generate and create employment as they require, even as the case may require. So that should be incorporated in the teaching learning process that goes on in DOE. Equity. <coughs> DOE will inculcate in its staff and students a deep appreciation of the importance of all aspects of equity being geographic origin, gender, disability, income, all any kind of, um, all, it should be all embracing in both in programs, its infrastructure and its um, facilities. In education and provide them the tools and skills to put this appreciation to use in conformity with provisions of the Higher and Tertiary Education Act 2016. We will you from hence what we call in the act. Yeah. <laughs> service. GUE staff and students will also put service to community and the nation at their heart of their core values in conformity with the provisions of the act. Sustainability. The GUE will inculcate a deep awareness among about sustainability issues and a culture of sustainable development among its staff and students. In addition, the TUE will develop a culture of sustainable, efficient, innovative resource management. So this is the sustainability, both resource management and also uh, environmental and other sustainable matters, I think, case maybe. The proposed motto for the TUE is to serve the nation through scholarship and professionalism. Short and succinct, and uh, we welcome your comments and ideas on this. Mission, the vision, the core values, etc. <coughs> aims and objectives of the university. The overall aim, earlier cutting presented, the aim of the study. Now, this objective is of the proposed GUE. The overall aim of the GUE is to be a world-class university where I'm sure before the end of the day you will be tired of hearing world-class. <laughs> but we need to emphasize it. World-class university of education that produces quality teachers and educationists. Specifically, GUE will provide higher education for teachers with a view to improving the science and art of teaching. Train teachers to be proficient in their subject matters. Provide teachers with vocational skills and entrepreneurial capabilities to support their all-round development. Equip pro prospective teachers with necessary knowledge, pedagogic and research skills. Develop the character and proper attitudes, including self-confidence of teachers. Enable teachers to make proper use of instructional technologies and facilities, including multimedia and artificial intelligence, AI. Foster links between university and its graduates, with schools, government institutions, professional organizations, and other relevant stakeholders in order to ensure holistic training of teachers. Outreach community and other program, outreach program. Train teachers to transfer their knowledge, skills, entrepreneurial attitudes to their students. Sorry if there is repetition or any semblance of, you can always uh, combine these objectives if you feel necessary. 
produce teachers and educationists who have the competencies and qualifications to effectively manage educational institutions. Now, the governance structure, I'll just go to briefly. Most of it is based on the provisions of the Act and also NACA, that is the National Accreditation and um, Qualification Agency. Quality Assurance Agency. Thank you very much. So, we are, we are following the guidelines. So, it's not anything new as such. The university will be managed and not be under the direct line of supervision of OHAS. But the day-to-day -day administration, financial, academic, will be carried out by the management team of Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Register Boza, and other institutional organs such as the Senate. They are all outlined in the NACAC guidelines for registration of universities. The governing council will have um, chaired by a chairperson to be appointed by the president on the recommendation of the minister. And the composition of the council is stipulated by the Act and NACAC guidelines. The management will compose of the chancery, chancery, and the chancery will have the Senate, which is the organ, highest governing organ of the institution, and the composition and all is also provided by NACA guidelines. And going further down, there will be the management, there will be faculty, schools, and departments governed by faculty boards, which also uh, the NACA provides guidelines for its composition and uh, the university will also, the chancery, will have their own guidelines. The registry, registrar is the administrative head of the institution and uh, the NACA and TASHA hire the app stipulates its functions and how it should operate. Relationship with other um, agencies and government institutions. The GUE will be a public university set up and generally owned by the government. The establishment, mandate, financing, and overall management of the GUE will conform to the Act and to NACA guidelines. MOAS will be the supervisory and line ministry. NACA the, um, will register the university if it meets all its accreditation criteria and guidelines. The Ministry of Basic Education, MOPSI, is the main, the main line ministry responsible for control and management of all basic and secondary schools in the country. MOPSI recruits and manages all teachers and educational professionals in public and government submitted schools. As the main mandate of the EU will be training of teachers and educational professionals to the real levels, is going to be the main client and partner of the EU. As such, the EU will liaise with MOPSI to determine their needs in terms of teacher numbers, subject matter competence, program development, implementation of practice experiences for students, curriculum development review, and student recruitment and overall enrollment. So MOPSI is going to be a main partner of the Relationship with other Gambian universities and partners. The UAE will be an important member of the general university community in the Gambia, both public and private. As such, the UAE will collaborate and work with all of them to advance the course of university education and research and generally support national development. As UTD is more established university with advanced postgraduate programs of study, 
Kiwi will partner with UTT for training and upgrading of some of its nascent staff to masters and PhD qualification to enable them eligible to teach in programs of the UAE. This program will continue the ongoing. GUE will also partner other universities in our youth center to teach different courses as they propose. And the new University of Civil Service for management and other related courses. GUE will also have relationships with other organizations, especially the, the, the Gambia Teacher Senior which are the main, which is the main organ representing teachers. They will also seek to partner with our higher education advice committee, the Christian organizations such as Gambia Christian Council, as well as Catholic Methodist and Anglican Education Secretariat, and also the Supreme Islamic Council the Ahmadiyya Education Secretariat and Amana. The UE will also have close partnership and relationship with WEC to ensure that the UE curriculum and program address the needs of Gambian students who will seek to WEC administer national and regional exams. Now, this one will the relationship with international partners, donors, UNDP, World Bank, etc., will be channeled through the government and through the line ministries. Let me take time for this one international relationship. We are having some proposals here for the ministry to consider. The Gambia does not have all it requires in terms of management and academic capacity to immediately set up, manage, and run GUE on its own. The country does not presently have the human and material capacity to manage and run a fully fledged university of education on its own. It is therefore being proposed that more has entered into some form of partnership agreement with a well-established and reputable University of Education to set up and jointly manage the UE until such a time that it has the capacity to stand alone and be managed and run by a cohort of qualified, experienced and competent Gambian professionals. The partnership agreement should involve the following the partner university to provide the main principal officers to manage the key management positions of the GEA. These are the vice chancellors, deputy vice chancellors, registrar of professors, etc. that we don't have. The partner university will provide qualified lecturers and staff to lecture in the programs and courses for which there are no qualified Gambians. The partner university will offer scholarships and concessionary tuition fees to identify Gambian staff with the qualification and potential to become university lecturers to pursue higher degree qualifications in the identified subject areas. That is, there should be an agreement with the university to train Gambians or provide scholarship to train Gambians to pay the level. Yeah. Each staff of the partner university seconded to GUE, whether in an administrative capacity or whether in an administrative power and management position or academic and lecturing position, should mentor and build up the capacity of a Gambian counterpart with the intention of Gambian counterpart succeeding in or her in that position. So there should be transfer of uh, skills and knowledge. All these are proposals that should be put to the partner university before any agreement is signed or agreed on. Moas 
so we leverage opportunities in South South cooperation programs as well as the Commonwealth, ECOWAS, AU, and other multilateral development partnership to mobilize human resource, financial and material support to the Following a study tour by the GCTC to two universities in Ghana, University of Education, Geneva, and University of Cape Coast, were identified as potential partners for GUA. The University of Geneva Education was a college of education <laughs> and later transformed into a university of education. So it has the experience of being transformed from the college to a university. UCC has from inception been a university of teacher education and has a strong and outstanding 60-year track record of teacher education. UCC was also instrumental in mentoring whenever in its transformation from teacher college to a university. Now what we are suggesting is for MOAS to approach both U, EW, and UCC and formally ask for a proposal for partnership to mentor and support the transformed TUA. MOAS will then negotiate and enter into partnership that will be in the best interest of TUA. In addition, we can um, explore other possible partnerships. But the main um, proposal here is to try to work with these two universities in Ghana. I think I'll just stop here and hand over to Katrin for the next session. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Sewer. We move right along to the section on academics. Um, and here, we'll just do a very quick overview of the <coughs> academics of the uh, proposed um, Gamaya University of Education, uh, the GUE. Starting first, with the the faculties of departments. We are proposing in our report that the GU would have nine faculties and departments we haven't decided yet because it's still fluid the number of departments that we will have in the nine faculties. But for the faculty of educational studies, we'll start with the faculty of educational studies will have the following departments. Uh, one is general education, which will focus on history of education, educational planning and development in the Gamma Institute Education. There is also going to be a department of educational technology, of course, to focus on the technologies that are used to facilitate education, like especially the information and communications technologies, be it online education, be it multimedia education, like videos and, and things like that, audios, um, audio resources and things like that. And then there's also going to be a faculty or department of alternate education, focusing on special education and adult education, which I personally think the last of is education, which should be, I think, uh, given more attention in this country, because if we're going to have um, uh, if, if we have, as we do now, a very relatively high illiteracy rate, I think we can do a lot to address that by having aggressive other education programs. I always give the story of my dad, who never went to school, but when Uncle Batrawale, the late Uncle Batrawale, opened Balangar School in the 50s, 53, my dad went to night school. And Uncle Ba himself told me that my dad got to the point where the then the, the Minister of Education then offered him a UQ job, uh, unqualified teacher position. And he said, no, thank you very much. I want to continue with my business. But my dad, in the end, he could read and write and all of that, all because of 
uh, around education. So I think I see no reason why we shouldn't wrap up some effort like that to get more Gambian adults, especially those of us who are in rural areas that never had the opportunity to go through Western education, but instead went to the Daras and the Madrasas. Give them opportunity to be educated in uh, in the Western traditional education system. And of course, being able to, to enable to contribute more to our national uh, development efforts. And of course, we we'll also will have early childhood and, and basic education department, as well as Department of Education and Research of Management. You will remember, you will report that the only minister said in his uh, opening statement that the Gambia University Education is not going, going to train qualified school administrators. It's just going, going to be enough to have people who are trained in pedagogy. Because at the end of the day, if you have, like you say, or if you have all, um, all hat and no cattle, in other words, you have a lot of teachers who are trained, but you don't have the people who have the requisite skills to manage these schools, it's all going to come to naught. Which is why it's going to be important to have this department to focus on planning and management, curriculum studies, as well as measurement and evaluation. I don't need to tell you how important all of these each uh, contribute uh, are very important to ensure that we have a quality education system in the country. And the educational methods, the methods would be pedagogical studies, studies teaching practice, uh, micro and in class, as well as macro teaching practice. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what's it called, the courses and classes. TVET courses would consist of home science, group work, uh, metal work, technical drawing, auto mechanics, and applied electricity. If you go through the report, you'll notice that most of these programs are motivated by the subjects that are offered by Gambian students at the worst level. So we're saying that, look, we need to provide trained teachers who can teach kids who are sitting to this exam. And it's very, it's very that simple. And so what we did was we went through the WASP uh, data, the WIKE data, that showed each subject the number of candidates that were offering them. So obviously we know that we cannot, at the one go, in one go, provide teacher training all the subjects. But we will start with the most popular subjects, make sure we get to the point where we can address the, uh, we adequately address our requirements for teachers in this most popular subject. And then over time, gradually also address the needs of the remaining uh, subjects. We're also proposing a faculty of languages and literature, consists of the Department of National Languages and Literature. Just about a few weeks ago, I was at a workshop that was organized by MOPSI that looked at one, a national language study uh, across the country. The objective here is the plan here is to introduce national language instruction from early childhood um, uh, to all the way to grade four before they transition them to English. And we also looked at a report that was also a validation workshop uh, or validation of a report on national language policy. So going forward, this is to be very important. Uh, national literature, literature and national languages is going to be very, very important if we're going to maintain and continue to have a very sense of uh, a very strong sense of national identity and culture, which, if you ask me, is being constantly threatened and bombarded by our neighboring uh, Senegal. And so we really need to do something about that. Uh, of course, there are also going to be the language and literature, uh, French language and literature, French as well as Arabic language and literature and Arabic. We'll have a faculty of humanities and social studies education. The social studies uh, education department will take care of geography, history, government, and civics. Uh, you remember, um, as I'm sure many of you in this room would do, that when the government schools used to have civics as a subject, and for some reason they just got dropped, it fell off the wagon. And I think that also has contributed to our loss of a strong sense of national identity, and that needs to be brought back. The way to do that is to equip the teachers who are going to go back to the schools and teach them the subjects. And so, hence the proposal the social studies education program. Of course, we'll have a religious studies program, department that will uh, focus on Islamic education uh, and also Christian studies in recognition of the fact that we are predominantly a bi religion country um, with Muslim, with Islam, and uh, Christianity being the, uh, the main religions here. Faculty of Art Education is going to have a department of fine and applied art with art and craft, 
theater arts. In this, I have to say, is motivated by a story told we went to the uh, University of Education in Winneba, and they are the performance arts department. They are fantastic performance for us, and they are into theater, <coughs> drama, music, and everything. Only visual production. All of these are important because we live in the world that's highly multimedia these days, with Instagrams and uh, YouTubes and whatever have you. My kid, who is like seven, tells me that he wants to grow to be a YouTuber with a million followers, you know? So, I mean, it's, 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 it's the world has changed. And look at the consumption of movies in, um, uh, from Nigeria and from Senegal. And all of, what is, all of that actually goes to contribute to the erosion of our national identity again. But we can't overemphasize um, emphasize enough the importance of having that very strong sense of culture. Music education also, we need to work on our music industry. Mathematics and science education will contribute will, 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 will focus on pure mass and science, biology, chemistry, natural and environmental sciences, as well as educational technology, like I said, information and communication technology, multimedia and AI. Business and finance education, this will consist of the departments of economics, um, business and entrepreneurship, education, accounting, and finance. And also, we also have functional coaching and professional development that will provide short courses in human resource management, information technology, leadership, project management, and writing and communication. These are suggested uh, topics that will be provided or courses that will be provided by the Faculty of Professional Development. With regards to the Faculty of Postgraduate Studies, this will provide MPhil, MA, and Masters, and MS programs, and all the way up to a PhD level. Of course, like I said, and keep emphasizing, all of this is not going to happen overnight, but this is the plan, this is the objective that we are looking at. Okay. And excuse me, these programs in the Faculty of Postgraduate Studies will be delivered in three modes regular, face to face, where people are in, 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 um, uh, in class, and sandwich, where they basically would be delivered at the end of regular 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 pre, uh, program, like during the summer, or they can be delivered online. I always tell people that one of the, as terrible as COVID was, one of the COVID pandemic was, one of the things the change that it's brought about is that, is that it's brought about a new respect for online education. It used to, it used to be that if you tell anybody you have a master's, uh, in, uh, an online master's degree, they will look at you like you're funny. But now everybody's got an online degree, so, so it's now more the norm rather than the exception to the rule, actually. So, which is good because it actually opened up the uh, opportunities to a lot of people to acquire education. We visited the, uh, the College of Open and Distance Education Code of the University of Cape uh, Coast in Ghana. And they're doing a fantastic program because what they're doing there is to, like I said, increasing access to their program by providing distance education. And to do that, they have a network of study centers, and they, those study centers, they have certified instructors that provide instruction and support services to the learners all over the country. So you can easily imagine doing that in the government. It's not going to be difficult. We've got a fiber cable ring in this country. So we've got good, good internet access all the way to Fototo, I think. And so there's no reason why we shouldn't arrive on top of the infrastructure and deliver quality online education that's supported with a network of study centers uh, all over the country. Regarding the direct rates of the, of the, of the <coughs> university, we'll have a director of academic affairs who will provide various services, including accreditation programs, admissions, and money of student records and things like that. Academic planning and quality assurance would be responsible for ensuring that DUD programs, academic programs, are kept the highest level of continuous improvement. The, the important thing here is that we cannot less rest on our laurels. We have to make sure that we are all the time working to make sure that we we meet and if not exceed the best and highest international standards around the world. And so this will be hired or headed by a quality assurance as a uh, sort of directory, and we'll have a quality assurance policy and all of that. Okay. And then the part-time programs, uh, this is basically again an aim at helping people or increasing access to quality education. So that we will have we'll realize that not everybody can come 
to attend the GE on a full-time basis. So for that reason, we'll have the DPP part-time program, the director of part-time program to upgrade some degree program to working individuals and also to performers or to upgrade to a degree level. Teaching practice and internships will support the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the various uh, departments and programs in terms of ensuring that the products that come out of GUE will have adequate experience in terms of the practice of teaching, like going out to the classrooms, going out to the field. Uh, and for that reason, we'll have this new process and internships uh, directory to help support the implementation of this program. There is going to be general studies directory. We will provide uh, the GUE with various courses that all GUE students will take before graduation. Now, the notion of general studies is something that's very widely practiced. Uh, for instance, in my alma mater at the University of uh, Nigeria, uh, they have a, a, a number of general studies, about three general studies courses that one of which is the use of English. All students at the university must take. Use of English deals with how to write, with how to recite the book, how to um, format your bibliographical citations, how to use the library, how to get information from the library, and all of that. That's taken by all the university students. And to me, I always keep telling people that's the most useful course that I ever took from the university or any university from, from that, for that matter. By virtue of the fact that I, my work as a consultant basically is all about writing. And so what I learned from GS 101, General Studies 101 in Tsuka, all the way back, has been very, very useful to me. And I used to do that there is what they call GS 103, which is social sciences for engineering and science students, where engineering and science students learn about history, you know, um, literature, and all of that, to give them a more rounded perspective. On the other hand, you also have DS 104, which is science and engineering for arts and social sciences students. And it gives them a perspective too, also on this um, uh, perspective on science and engineering issues of our time. So this is going to be, excuse me, a very important uh, 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 program in the sense that it's going to help provide students who are as rounded as they can possibly be uh, coming out of a particular program. It's of course going to be a site and development director to make sure that the GUA constantly um, uh, is at the forefront of the site and, 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 and development and to make sure that it will create a condition environment to nurture innovation and create it in GUA and also disseminate its findings. Is it okay now? Hmm? It's the navigation pad. Okay. 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 So is it okay now? Is it better now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. So you should have screamed before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, the slide and development, like what saying, also open and distant education. Like I said, um, we saw in Ghana, both at the University of Education, whatever, at the University of Cape Coast, the extent to which they are putting open and distant education to use and to great benefit for that. For us also, it's important to acknowledge the fact that the National Tertiary Education Policy 